Okay, one of the most typical guitar sounding things you can do is bending the strings. Bending the string. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Day three of Rocksmith 60 Day Guitar Challenge. Tonight I've decided to focus on the visual language of Rocksmith. And I do mean tonight because it's 11 p.m. And this is a uh, kind of a quiet to midnight session. Uh, this is an important test for a video game. It's one thing to, you know, test it in sort of a full sound mode and with the ability to yell into the microphone, etc. Uh, it's, it's a certain kind of fun that way. It's a different kind of fun when you can take a guitar at midnight and not disturb your neighbors whilst having fun playing it. Um, what's great about it so far is that I can get uh, some killer sounds through this Rocksmith. These are sound emulators, but they're so good. Uh, you know, we can quibble about the, the few percentage of qualities that, that it misses, but, but they're overall so, so cool. Um, and dynamically allocated to you as you play uh, appropriately. So um, I'm about to do some bends. And uh, this is where I started to pick up the visual language of a Rocksmith. So um, to explain what I mean by visual language, um, you can think of uh, notation. Uh, as a kind of uh, writing style and depending on a person the type of music the place the time uh, the way we write down music is different so ancient Chinese uh, had their own style of notation that is thousands of years old um, in European medieval classical music, a style of sheet music and notation evolved that we today think of as music notation. Um, but, you know, a few decades ago, uh, guitar tablatures became a thing as well. And, uh, and each is slightly different and, uh, you know, has different pros and cons, so to speak, uh, but each uh, has a learning curve, and of course, Rocksmith has a learning curve as well. While I'm here, one of the recommendations is to practice in riff repeater mode, so that's what I'm doing here. And so it is late. I'm just gonna go in a plain old boring way. I'm just gonna go through the uh, few of these simple lessons in order for me, for you, to practice the visual language of the interface. This is a video I wish I was able to find when I started researching rocks. A video that would walk me through the lessons of Rocksmith teaching a guitarist uh, its language. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So here we go. I, um, I have lost the video of uh, me going through bends and uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs, which we're going to go through tonight as well. Um, I've spent about two hours on this already. Um, so, uh, if, if I'm slightly better than you uh, the first time around, it's because of that. Uh, I, I had a bit of a hard time with it at first, and even now I'm not sure if I'm going to remember all the stuff. Uh, 
uh, that I've learned yesterday, in fact. Um, oh, and I will say this, uh, going into this, I was wondering if Rocksmith was uh, uh, going to be able to teach me how to play guitar better. And I can honestly say that in two days, it has. It has made me a better guitar player in just two days. Uh, so, happy to report that. Anyways, let's, let's get to practicing, right? So, the orange string is the third string from the bottom, aka G. Uh, 11 is 11th fret. And you can see that orangey ribbon and other ones, the blue ones, etc., um, have a little wavy pattern in them. And those are indicating the bends. So that's part of the visual language of the platform. Um, it's almost as if they have formalized the feel, because playing with the feel uh, has a lot to do with the bends. I think I've uh, uh, stressed that point yesterday as well in day two footage. Okay, so let's go through it one more time. So you can practice along if you want. So one more time so we can get accustomed to this. a point where you can feel that you are riding that ribbon. Let's try it one more time.
time for good measure. I don't know why it's grey now. Smith's retro style. No. Okay. So that's the bends. Now let's go into legato, whatever that means. You can really spice up your playing with hammer-ons and pull-offs. Let's take hammer-ons for starters. I thought this was legato. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. If these techniques are challenging for you, if this, you're actually playing guitar for the first time, you want to go through those sessions. I've been playing for over 30 years. Exemplary performance. Whoa. I think that's a bit overstating it, don't you think? I don't know where my pick went. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to go through that one again. So, I've realized that uh, my work laptop, whilst performing exemplary, uh, cannot be relied upon to do this uh, for any extended period of time. Uh, so, I have ordered the PlayStation 4 uh, as a dedicated uh, machine for Rocksmith. I was going to build a computer, um, but if you're building a computer, might as well run Linux on it, And uh, because I wanted to have a dedicated computer system for Rocksmith, but um, Rocksmith doesn't run on Linux. Yeah, you can maybe somehow make it work, but you know, there's Wine, Windows Emulator, and other things that you can do, but it's... Um, uh, it's probably not the greatest experience, so I'm I'm I want the best experience. So I got PlayStation for it. Um, I don't want to compromise on the experience. I was going to um, build a streaming computer. Uh, planned on spending probably about a thousand dollars on it, uh, but you can pick up PlayStation for four hundred bucks, and it's you know. You know, it's you. You also get to have PlayStation. <laughs> you know, I, I like. I'm not a gamer, but uh, it's uh, uh, you know, it's it's a probably enjoyable experience. Okay, let's do some legato again. And once again, focus on the visual language and following along. These are simple uh, exercises. You're ready for the which is, track now. You know, Here goes. Why are we doing this? Now let's do riff repeater. The difference between regular mode and riff repeater. With riff repeater, you go uh, um, uh, through it as many times as you want, and that's practicing. Without riff repeater, just going through it straight, uh, you get a report card at the end of each play. Uh, and while that's fine, um, that report card, if you're doing uh, repetitions, right? If you're just doing reps, um, that report card essentially becomes, uh, you know, thing that's slowing you down. So. down yesterday to figure it out. You can also slow it down on YouTube.
this, I don't think so. Alright, sloppy. Just call me Sloppy Joe. Wait, I gotta drink. Today I figured out uh, the delay issue. Uh, well, insofar as to the amount of delay, it's about two um, point two and a quarter milliseconds, basically. Uh, and the way I figured out that out is by importing the audio and video into a video editing program and then uh, moving them uh, individually uh, in order to get them synced up properly and I had to move them by uh, about two milliseconds and change so that's about the delay that was for me um, and that's the way I, I found out it's probably the least efficient way of doing it but um, it was a freebie for me here we go should do this one. Maybe I'll try the accompanying track a little bit. Let's see. E, B, E, A, B. 
Hey. not able to read these this fast uh, this is me working about 60% from memory and about 40% from what's on the screen uh, and maybe my estimate of that is off and I'm not even sure uh, in which direction and by how much uh, but I know that uh, uh, part of it is coming from memory and um, I've sp slowed this down significantly and sort of played through it a bunch of times. And, uh, and that's how, why I'm able to go through it like this. Um, it's simple uh, and therefore useful in understanding uh, the Rocksmith way of communicating music notation, right? Uh, and so, as someone who's interested in the product as such, this is very curious to me. And I can't wait to... I'm just getting more comfortable. I can't wait uh, to uh, be on the other side of these 60 days because uh, uh, that level of exposure is going to give me a great amount of insight into uh, the product itself. So, very cool. It's good work if you can get it. I keep losing my picks. I mean, that's nothing new. That's just, if you're a guitarist, there exists a uh, black hole somewhere near you um, at all times and it sucks in all of your guitar picks into it and that's where guitar picks go 
this is uh, this is not me, Stephen Hawking. Uh, already explained all of this. Let us continue, shall we? <laughs> At the end there, I almost locked in with the area um, on the screen that is appropriately uh, located for the messaging from the visual cues from the screen to activate my fingers. That area exists somewhere and it's probably a moving target and I haven't located it yet, which is why my playing is so labored and <coughs> Apologies. So off the, you know, beat. <coughs> Anywho. Uh, maybe a couple more times and then we'll go to the next one. <laughs>
generous rocks. I'm going to set this one out. Let's see, what are we seeing here? I suppose it's useful sometimes to not play and just observe. So we know how many notes is in this now, 141 apparently. out of sync. Yeah, that feels out of sync. its little heart. Uh, it's pulling its weight <clears throat> admirably, <clears throat> but uh, I can tell that it's just choking. And I was so disrespectful when I first started running Rocksmith three days ago. I had several applications open on my laptop that were just tremendous resource hogs, uh, and I didn't even care. expected this thing to... Um, do what needs to be done and it mostly did so <clears throat> until i ran out of uh, a hard drive space because i'm recording uh, this uh, as well so uh, it's taking up huge amounts of uh, space on the hard drive uh, so i say all that to say uh, that um, i have uh, uh, probably a week or two before uh, my dedicated rocksmith system arrives um, and uh, until then what I figured is I would experiment with low resolution settings on Rocksmith what I mean by that is <clears throat> no frills kind of setup so I'll turn off like applause that's a special effect you don't need special effect you don't need audience rendered in the screen you don't necessarily need the speakers so there's things that can be done that would uh, 
make it easier and it's going to be interesting to to then you know i've had the full rocksmith experience for the last three days it's been great i get what it's about uh when it's in sort of full swing um but to now going into the meat and potatoes of this phase one over the next week or two in this lo-fi low-res let's conserve as many resources as possible mode in Rocksmith and to sort of play like that, well, I, I, I guess that's going to be interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't want to change it now because I didn't want to muck around with it. It's late in the day. I'll change it at some point, but, um, but that's going to be interesting. So looking forward to that. There we go. for as long as I have. You develop habits. I rarely play single notes. I usually play Six strings like this. <laughs> That's sort of my style. <clears throat> yeah, I'll do it my style this time. This is how I would play this. Let's check out the next lesson. Chords. All right, let's check out how chords. Um, I'm weirdly divided about the chords. If you're gonna play the guitar, you've got to know some chords. That just That's means you strum notes on several strings at a time. That's also true. Chords are usually used as part of the accompaniment to a song strum along on the chord to support the singer or the solo. Preach. Brother Let's try rock. strumming all six strings at once. Let's start. do it. Oh, that's just open. Let's, let's put the chord on there, man. Let's bring in your fretting hand and try to make a more useful chord. Oh. Take your second finger, your middle finger, and put it on the second fret of the A string. Uh -huh. You'll need to arch your finger some so that oh. you're only pressing you're the string me. down with the very tip of your finger. If you use the side, you might end up muting some of the other strings. Just the tip now then. let's pick each string and make sure each one is sounding Ooh. out clearly. Keep your finger down the whole time. I will. Brother Smith. Good. Now strum the whole chord. Here we go. Give it a shot. All right. <laughs> now keep that one finger chord going. 
and let's add a second finger in there. Let's do it, man. You've already got your middle finger on the second fret of the A string. Now put your third finger, your ring finger, on the second fret of the D string. I haven't gone through this material. This Since is you're on the same fret around. on two strings right next to each other, <clears throat> it might feel like a tight squeeze at first. But don't worry, there's plenty of room. Your Not second if you got finger will go fingers. right in the middle of the fret. Dudes. But your third finger will need to get wedged in there between your second finger and the fret wire. The trick is to make sure it isn't touching any other strings. Mm. Man, this is all distilled. Really nice. Just one more finger in there. Let's do it, man. So, you've already got your second and third fingers down on the A and D strings. Now, if you put your man. first finger down on the first fret of the G string, that's what she e minor said. She becomes said that. E Let's major. get another finger in there. That's what she said. That would have been This chord clever. comes up all the time in all genres of music, so it's a great one to get under your fingers. And again, the I... thing here is to make sure that your fingers only touch the strings they're supposed to touch. Touch any others, and you'll just end up muting them. Let's play through all the strings again to make sure you're getting all the notes you paid for. Fretting hand has some stuff in here. Let's go back to the strumming hand. Make sure you're gonna hold down the chord, then strum some patterns until you get ready to change the chord. So it's really the strumming hand that's in charge of the rhythm. You can strum a chord down. Or you can strum a chord up. Usually you'll use a mix of both together. Let's just try going down, up, down, up, down a bunch of times. Let's put it all together in a song. Let's do it. Here goes. Oh, now it's C minor. Okay. That's a lazy E minor sound. That's all there is to that. <clears throat> okay, okay, I think we got it. That's fine. Oh, oh, oh this, this is that report. report. Let's check, check out Tremolo 101. Tremolo just needs to play a note over and over again really 
fast. There isn't a whole lot to it. You just keep on picking. The real trick is not to tense up. Also, it oh. might help to tilt the pick a little bit, so it's hitting the string at more of an angle. Oh. Well, I'm embarrassed to say that's not what I thought tremolo would be. Give it a shot. Oh, you got it. This tremolo is on the 12th fret of the G string. Yeah, Hit the so. G string back and forth to play the tremolo. This tremolo is on the 12th fret of the G string. Hit the G string back and forth to play the tremolo. You've got some of it down. Now see if you can play that tremolo just a little faster. This tremolo is on the 12th fret of the G string. Be sure not to hit the other strings when you try. Sounds like you're on the wrong string. Make sure you tremolo on the G string. You've got some of it down. Now see if you can play that tremolo just a little bit. Sounds like you're on the wrong string. Make sure you tremolo on the G string. So I've heard about this. Uh, sometimes Rocksmith has a hard time recognizing um, the input. I'm most definitely on the G string, playing on the 12th fret. Um, let's try again. Hmm. Maybe it was slightly All right. out of tune. Now we'll drop that tremolo into a full guitar riff. Okay. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Great job. I wasn't sure if it was like super fast or like that mid tempo. Thing. You're ready for the practice track now. Let's do it. Here goes. Those uh, zigzag lines. That's the visual language. I see what they're doing there. So I've never played that before, and I felt like I was sort of almost kind of keeping up. So. Wonderful performance. Get out of here. That's, no, that's unacceptable performance. Well, let's try it again, though. That was fun. Ah, okay, space. Skip to practice track. You ready for the practice track now? Here goes.
Oh, okay, so now we're going to go into Excellent Riff Repeater mode and uh, play this a few times. Space, down arrow. You're ready for the enter. practice track now. Here goes. There we go. And let's, let's do it. So this is what I was hoping to achieve um, uh, with this day three to log an hour of practice time with the game. Um, and as it so happens, uh, this has been one of those in the still of the night sessions. Um, I'm, it's, you know, what I've set out to do. It's been done, but I find myself wanting to continue to play the game some more. And so I will. And uh, this was the entire point of getting this game. Uh, I wanted to get addicted to it. And I am starting to. Because we addict to everything, right? We addict to uh, people and TV and you know, drugs and all sorts of things, situations, feelings, uh, memories. Um, the best we can do is to uh, choose our addictions carefully, and um, Rocksmith is something that I look forward to getting addicted to. And uh, I'm feeling the addiction uh, coming on. And so, so it's, it's a, a wonderful movie. feeling. So, so let's continue.
I guess I, uh, uh, all these decades I kept confusing tremolo with tremolo bar. That's, uh, you know, this, to me, this is just alternate picking. What? Okay. I don't know. Um, so, you know, Rocksmith has done their job. This is another thing, you know. Um, uh, there's been a uh, little formal education in terms of guitar growing up. Um, and so a lot of terms get confused uh, and used wrongly and a lot of misinformation gets spread. Like, you know, heavy strings, heavy gauge strings, the 13s. Stevie Ray Vaughan used uh, 13. So, so we must all use 13s, 13s right? <sighs> Surprisingly <sighs> enough, uh, it's not, not true. true. Uh, believe me, egg on my face. Uh, there's a lovely <coughs> YouTube channel called Rick Beato. Um, he's a very famous YouTuber, uh, producer, musician, etc. Anyways, he's done a, a scientific comparison. It's a fascinating video. You can find it on YouTube. I recommend you check it out. If I remember, I'll link to it. It's after midnight. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> then I have to export and upload this stuff before I go to sleep. Definitely plan on having more of these lessons. So there's a whole bunch of them left, and I will continue to explore them. And I think this is a really good way to learn the visual language of the game. So really looking forward to that. Good night, everyone.